Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Design School. Today I have something super exciting for you. We're gonna be recreating this design in just one click. Seriously, just one. I'm gonna press a button and this design is going to automatically show up on my screen. And I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step in this tutorial. Let's get started. Now before we dive in, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss out on any future Sports Design School tutorials. We have a lot of exciting content coming your way very soon, so make sure you don't miss out on that. Today I'm going to be walking through the process of this Photoshop magic, how to recreate this design in one click. Seriously, it's that easy. And today I'm going to be talking about this thing called Photoshop Actions. And Photoshop Actions are the thing that power the ability to do everything like this in one click. They're basically like magic, and when you use them for yourself, it'll feel like magic. So what are Photoshop actions, you might be wondering? Well, Photoshop actions are a sequence of pre-designed effects that you can apply to any photo automatically. It's as simple as pressing a button and Photoshop running the entire sequence of effects for you to create an end result. Now you might be wondering, well, what does that even mean or what does that look like? And I'm gonna walk you through what that process entails, but I'm also gonna give you some examples of what Photoshop Actions can do. So let's go over to my favorite resource for finding things like Photoshop Actions, Creative Market. Now under Creative Market, I just went to Add-ons, Photoshop Add-ons, Actions, to get to this page right here. Now as I scroll down, you can see there's literally thousands, if not millions of Photoshop actions out there. For instance, there's this one, this paint Photoshop action. I'm gonna click on it. And you can see this would look really good with a player cut out. And it would be a nice effect to add to anyone's collection. Let's go back. How about this one right here, the stripping gold Photoshop action. Now, if you keep up with college sports design, you might notice this looks a little bit familiar. The Purdue University athletics team uses an effect just like this for a lot of their designs that they put out. So it's as simple as pretty much pressing one button and it does the rest for you. Now you might have previously thought something like this might be out of reach, especially for someone that's just diving into Photoshop for the first time. I still remember when I was initially learning Photoshop and then one of my friends introduced me to Actions and it elevated my designs from just very basic, simple effects to something I didn't even think I was capable of by using and learning from these tools. So today I'm gonna to be walking through this particular action and I'm gonna walk you through this step of how to install it, how to run it, what it looks like, all of that great stuff, how to edit it afterwards. And so, we're gonna start off by just downloading this file. I already have it downloaded, and we'll be able to walk through that whole process through the download I already have. If you wanna download this action for yourself, I'll link it down in the description, but also if you wanna download a completely different action, the process is pretty much the exact same, no matter what action you have. So just follow along and you'll be able to see kind of what the process looks like. So I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder and here I have the Photoshop action folder opened. And in here you can see four main files and a help folder. And I'm gonna go left to right and explain what each one of these does. The help folder is essentially just the instructions. It's super helpful if you've never done anything with Photoshop actions before. It usually is a pretty good step-by-step -step explainer. The .atn file is the action itself. That's what installs the action into Photoshop. Our .abr file is our brush file, and that's how you install brushes to be able to use them in Photoshop. If you've seen other videos that I've put out, you probably are familiar with this format of file. Our next file is .pat, which is our pattern file, and just like brushes, you can install patterns into Photoshop, and you use that with this file type. And then again, just another action file. We're gonna disregard that for now. So let's install these files into Photoshop. 
and it's a super easy process. I'm gonna go into my Photoshop document. I'm gonna type B to pull up my brushes tool. I'm gonna click the drop down and press on the gear and hit import brushes. And here, I just select the .abr file to import the brush into Photoshop. Super easy. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Next, we're gonna do our patterns. Again, super easy to do. I'm gonna hit window and patterns to bring up my patterns window. And then I'm gonna click on this button right here and hit import patterns. I'm then gonna select the pattern file right there in my downloads folder. And then lastly, we're gonna install our action. Pretty much the exact same process. I'm gonna go to window, actions to bring up my actions window. And then I'm gonna press this button again and hit load actions. I'm then gonna select the first action. It has two options, but I'm only gonna install the first one for now because that's all you need to run this particular action. I'm gonna hit open and then it's all good to go. So that's the installation. So what does it look like to actually run this Photoshop action? Well, I'm gonna go over and create a new document in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna make it 1920 by 1920 to keep things simple. I'm gonna go over to Chrome. And I found this awesome LeBron James PNG cutout right there in Chrome. I just Google searched it and I'm just gonna drag that into my document. And I'm gonna position him kind of how I want him. That's looking pretty good. So you can see here we have a layer and a background. Now this is where it's important to read the instructions in your Photoshop action that you download in particular because each one has a different file structure for how you assemble your layers to run your action appropriately. Now that sounds super complicated, but it's really not. I'll show you here in a second. So what we're gonna do is simply duplicate this layer you can duplicate by clicking on the layer and holding up while holding or dragging up while holding alt. And now I'm going to make this bottom layer the background. So I'm going to go to layer new background from layer. I'm then going to delete this white solid right above that. So now you can see we have a single layer right there which is our cutout and then the background with the white background super easy. Now there's a couple different ways of doing this next step. So if you were to have an image that wasn't cut out yet, you'd be able to just go in to Photoshop, create a new layer, and then open up the brush tool, and then select a brush, and then just paint over all the areas that you want to keep. That's a really primitive way of doing a cutout in Photoshop, but that's an option for running an action. What I tend to do is if I have a cutout already done, I find it's usually easier. I just use the full cutout. I'm gonna title the cutout brush in all lowercase. Now the case does matter, and the way you spell it does matter. Each Photoshop action has a very specific set of circumstances that you need. For instance, if I had used a capital B in brush, it wouldn't work correctly. So make sure you check out the instructions for what your action you download requires. I'm then going to go up to my actions tab, open up my action that I just downloaded, and press the play button at the bottom of the window. And if you hover over it, it says play selection. I'm gonna hit play. And I'd like to point out now, I'm not even touching my keyboard. Photoshop is running all of the sequenced effects for me right in Photoshop. I'm not doing anything. And you can see it's adding different layers and different brushes automatically for me. And you can see I have the entire document finished. I didn't do anything but press that one button. Now you might be asking, well that looks a little bit different than this intro graphic. Well, I just changed the background to purple. And it's super easy to do that. That's the nice thing about Photoshop Actions is 
it creates all the effects as layers. So you have the ability to go back and edit every single layer. For instance, if I wanted to get rid of the powder brush in the background of this image, it's as simple as just hiding the powder brush. And if I wanted to adjust the opacity for some reason, I just select it and change the opacity. It's that easy. So I'm going to scroll down and there's this layer right here that's titled BGB for background. I'm just going to double click and then select the purple from his armband. And then I did one more thing. Up here there's adjustments that you can go through. And I turned all of these off except curves one. I found that this produced the best result. And that's it. That's how I created this design in Photoshop. Nothing super complicated. And the nice thing is I'm then able to take this and add my own personal touch to it. You might be thinking, well, if you do this, you're basically just copying this person's work that created the action. And that's true to some extent, but you're able to, for instance, take this powder effect and then add it to a different background or add it to a different player or thing like that and then create your own version of this design. You could add text to this, change the powder explosion, change the lighting in the image. You can have full freedom to edit this and create it to make it look the way you want it to look. And I think that's really cool. It's a way of taking someone that's never really been in Photoshop before and then giving them this whole set of tools to use and to play around with to create professional looking designs. And guys, that's it. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel, but also make sure you leave a comment down in the comments on what you'd like to see next from this channel. We're always looking for new ideas or new tutorials that we could come out with. So what do you guys need help with? Other than that, that's it guys. Have a great day.